Hi, and welcome. My name is Carly Fitzgerald, and I am a board member of the professional organization called Women in GIS as a chair of the Professional Development Committee. We are a group of women and allies, all genders are welcome, banding together for support and encouragement. Our aim is to help women start and navigate their geospatial careers. The Professional Development Committee has been working hard in partnership with Brandman University to bring you relevant webinars highlighting the careers of women in geospatial careers. I would just like to take a couple minutes of your time today because we have an upcoming webinar, March 29th, that I'm sure you will be excited to hear about. Let me introduce you to Dr. Maria Fadiman. I am really excited to be here and I am super excited for the webinar. <laughs> Thank you. Um, our webinar series is an excellent opportunity for us to elevate and promote the amazing work that's being done by women in a field that is traditionally male dominated. We aim to bring you impressive women that break barriers and pave new paths in their field because we feel that representation matters. Maria Fadiman is an ethnobotanist and professor in the geography department at Florida Atlantic University. Maria, ethnobotany, it's not a term everybody might be familiar with. Can you describe what you do? Absolutely, it's a term so few people are familiar with. So what I do is I study the relationship between people and plants. And I focus on sustainability working out in the, the boonies and all sorts of remote areas that we're all connected to plants. Even if we think about what do we have for breakfast this morning, or what are our clothes made out of, or what are our house plants? So it's something that we all have a connection to. Thank you. Um, that's really exciting and very uh, unique for a field to work in. Uh, your webinar will also be dis discussing how GIS can be applied to the work that you do, including things like story maps that share your travels and projects and also the role that GIS can play in the future of ethnobotany and conservation. But even more exciting, Maria is a two-time TEDx speaker and a 2006 National Geographic Emerging Explorer. And she was also recently accepted as a fellow in the Explorers Club. Maria, the Explorers Club, it's a big achievement, isn't it? Can you tell us why? It is, so I am super excited to, to have been recently accepted and so many of the people I admire are part of the Explorers Club. And they just started accepting women in 1981. So I owe a huge debt to all of those women who worked so hard to break those barriers so that someone like me could, could become a fellow. And it happened during COVID, so I haven't yet gone to the office, but I'm super excited once things open up. <laughs> that is really cool. And yeah, I'm sure those first few uh, women that were being accepted, I was really great that they paved that path and broadens who they were accepting into the Explorers Club. So that's quite an accomplishment. A huge component of the work that you do is field work, often in other countries or in different difficult environments. Where have you conducted field work and what has the environment been like in the places that you have visited? So I have been lucky enough to work in the Amazon and to work in the African savannas and to work on the Tibetan Plateau and in the Philippines and New Zealand and the islands of Palau. Oh and these are some of the examples and where I've done most of my work are, are the rainforests in Latin America. And when you walk into the forest and it's green everywhere and you see the trees towering 60 feet above and then you hear a toucan and a flash of red and it's a scarlet macaw going through and then a little flick, flick of blue. It's a blue morpho butterfly that's huge. And then when it lands and it folds up its wings and it camouflages into the forest. Because the flip of blue is to attract somebody to get a little, little <laughs> something. And then when it folds up, so it doesn't get eaten. So it's just an active, alive, incredible ecosystem. That's really cool. And I imagine that's going to be so exciting every time when you first arrive and you first get into the into the forest and you start seeing all of these things come alive around you again. That's going to be really exciting. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing you for quite a while now. So I've heard many of your stories from your times in the field, and I love to hear them. Um, would you mind sharing one of them with us right now? Um, I know you have a story about a time that you got lost in Ecuador while conducting your PhD research. What happened? So I had a day off from collecting plants and from interviewing villagers. And I was so excited. I was gonna go on this new hike up, up this hill where they said I could see the ocean. 
So I'm heading up and the sun is filtering through the trees and I'm singing Beatles songs and off I go. And I go on the trails I know. And then I started to go up the, the new part. And I go up, 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 up. And it's kind of a faint trail because not very many people go on it. And up, up, and I look for the ocean and I see nothing. Huh. So I started walking further up and I look and I see nothing and I walk and I walk and I was like, all right, I can't see the ocean. And I didn't want to tell everybody I'd gone up there but not seen it, but I was like, well, you gotta do what you do. So the sun was starting to go down. I was like, all right, it's time for me to get back. So I start looking for the trail and I'm looking for the trail and I, and I don't see the trail. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. And I see my boot tracks. And I think, well, I am so jungle savvy. I will follow my own tracks. Just go the opposite <laughs> way and I'll find the trail. So I start going and I follow my tracks. And then I see there's another set of tracks going the opposite direction. And I'm like, oh, those are also my tracks. And then I see the tracks crossing over and I realized I walked all over this area so my tracks were not the same. So I thought, okay, okay, okay. And they say, if you get lost, you just stay still. And people knew the general direction I had gone. I was like, all right, I will, I will stay still. So I sat down for about 45 seconds and I got up, I was like, no, this doesn't work for me. <laughs> I'm getting back by myself. And so, I was in the west coast of Ecuador and the sun was setting in the west and I knew the station was east. So I held out my arms and I was like, all right, that's west, that's east. I'm just going to head that way. Mm -hmm. Never mind the compass I had that was back in my room. So I just head out right into the forest and I just start tromping through and I go up a hill and down a hill and I go up a hill and I was like, I know I'm going to hit a part of the trail. Mm -hmm. I know the direction. I go up a hill and down a hill. And the sun is starting to go down and I'm getting thirsty. I go up a hill and there is still no trail. I'm like, okay, okay. And then someone had said to me before I left, all rivers lead to the station. Okay, every time I went down a hill in the ravine, there was a, a little river. I was like, no problem, I will hike up the river. So I go into the river and I'm slogging along and the water's getting in my rubber boots. And, I'm, and then I realized, this is the most ridiculous thing. All rivers don't lead to the station. This is clearly someone who lives here. They know where their rivers lead. This whole forest is full of rivers. Okay, okay. So I head back out over the hills and I go up and I go down and I go up and there's a trail. I was like, yeah. It is not the trail I thought it was. I am nowhere near where I thought I was, but it's a trail. And it's when I recognize. All right, I'm good, I'm good. So I walk along the trail and the sun is now almost down. So I unzip my backpack, take out my flashlight, I put it in my pocket. Mm -hmm. I don't want to use the batteries now because I'm so clever. I won't waste them while I can mm -hmm. still see. And so I walk along and it's now it's dark, dark. And I get to a, a part of the hill, which, which is this steep, steep, muddy hill, but I know it. I'm like, okay. And so I put my left foot down sideways so I don't slip and I put my right foot down and I lift up my left foot and I fall down. I'm like, okay, okay. So I get up and I put my left foot down and fall down. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not doing this this way. So I just sat on my butt and I bumped down the hill. And I'm like, all right, stand up. All I have to do is make a left here and there's kind of a cliff thing to the right, but it's not a problem. Let me just get my flashlight. So I pat my pocket and there's no flashlight. <laughs> And I was like, oh my gosh, and I think of that huge hill up in the pitch black, and I know my flashlight is somewhere on that bumpy route down. Like, okay, okay, no problem. I still know where I am. I'll make a left here. So I start to turn, I put my foot out, and foo! And then another foot goes foo! And I am falling off the cliff because I totally don't know where I am. And I grab onto a tree above me, and I'm hanging by the tree, and I think, this cannot be happening. This is like a cartoon. And I'm hanging on. I thought, well, I caught the tree because because I'm so cool. And then my fingers start to slip. I go, no, 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 no. And my fingers slip off and I'm falling and I'm thinking, no. And then I bounce along the cliff and then boom, there's a tree that has fallen across the, the ravine mm -hmm. and I hit it. I think I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. 
and my legs are broken, I'm sure. I pat my leg, my legs are not broken. <laughs> I'm like, okay, now I think I know where I am. And so I just climb up this cliff thing and the, and the, the trail crosses over it. <laughs> I did not know where I am the whole day, but I was like, so I climb, climb, and I slide back down. I climb, climb, and I slide back down. And I realize I'm gonna take this one last shot and it's dark now. I can't see anything, but I think if I'm feeling where there's vegetation and then where there's no vegetation, that'll be the trail. Mm -hmm. So I climb up and I slide back down and I was like, I, I, I can't do it. I was like, okay, okay. I'll just wait till morning. And then I will climb up and I will get to the trail and I'll be back. Mm -hmm. So I set up my butt in the dirt and I prop my legs up on a tree so that I don't fall down the hill and I pull mm -hmm. a palm frond over me. And then once I got still, the reality became clear that the nocturnal snakes, the fertile ants that are super aggressive and really venomous come out at night and tarantulas hunt in the dark. Mm -hmm. And I know there are jaguars in this forest and I'm scared and I'm scared about what might get me. And embarrassingly, I am more scared that I'm not gonna look cool. And I was like, oh, I don't want the other researchers to come looking for me. I'm gonna get back all by myself because that is who I am. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe that's a self-constructed identity of who I wish I were. Mm -hmm. I sit in the dirt and I, and I try not to panic. And I think if I can just make it through the night, if it doesn't rain, I'll be okay. But this is the rainforest. So <laughs> And I'm lying in the rain and I'm sopping wet. And then the reality really crystallized before me. And I thought, I could die tonight. And then a little frightened part of my brain cried out, I hope they find me. And so I waited for an hour, another hour. And then I hear this, and I think, oh no, oh no. And then I hear this, bloody moon. And I'm like, oh. flashlights go right past me down the hill and I'm like hey here I am I'm not don't move I'm not moving and the flashlights come up and it's the director of the station and two of the other researchers and the director said Maria did you you got lost and I said I did get lost and I'm so glad you guys found me so thank you oh my goodness <laughs> that is like, I, I feel like I'm in the forest with you, watching all of these troubles and all of the struggles that she went through and the perseverance to, to find that trail back. Um, there's so many interesting parts of it. You experienced a lot of personal growth because of it as well um, around your identity. Can you speak to that? So I really felt that it was so important that I, I have this jungle persona and I'm so cool and also I'm a woman, so I have to actually show. I don't need anybody's help. I got this. And I did not want to ask for help. I did not want them to come looking for me. And then I realized I really needed help. And I got that I can still be this cool jungle person and that cool jungle person also needs help. And that those two actually go, go together and that that's okay. Thank you. Um... And thank you for sharing that story. Uh, we are really excited for your webinar coming up on March 29th. It is from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern, and that's 11 to 12 Pacific. During the live event, we'll be talking about how you developed your career, discuss the challenges of being a woman conducting field work, and highlight some of the ways that GIS is involved in the work that you do and its role in furthering ethnobotany and conservation. Um, to everybody watching, if you would like to register for this event, please uh, follow the link that is attached in the description. We look forward to having you there with us. If you are interested in attending but cannot make it to the live event, we will email out the recording to everyone that registers. So please still register. 
and Maria, I am so excited for this webinar. I'm so, so excited to you know, sit down and have more time with you to hear more about the work that you do. Um, so thank you again. And I can't wait until we sit down and chat again. Me too. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, everybody. <laughs> Bye.